warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm delighted to welcome you all to this uh, research outcome seminar on preserving family values in a globalized world. My name is Abdullahi Hussein. I'm the program manager uh, for the social science, arts and humanities, and I am your host. Research outcome seminar is a platform where researchers share their findings with their fellow academics, policymakers, and above all, it's a platform where the public learns about the outcomes that clear NRF funded projects have generated and the impacts that projects are making on the ground. Today, you will hear from five distinguished scholars who will share with us findings about their projects. Each presenter will have 15 minutes to speak, and we, will, we are hoping to have time for Q&A. As always, we encourage the audience to be actively engaged in the event by submitting their questions in the chat box, you or using the raise hand option to ask questions verbally. So if you want to ask your questions verbally, you can, you can do that uh, in this event. So we will start the event uh, with, a key, with a keynote speech by um, Samal al, al Manari. Ms. Samal is a well-known figure here in Qatar and has professional experience in the family-related issues. We are deeply grateful to her for accepting our invitation. Ms. Amal, over to you. You have 15 minutes. Shukran, Dr. Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Asa'ad Allah sabahakum jami'an bikul al-khair. أود أولا أن أشكر الصندوق القطري لرعاية البحث العلمي على إعطاء دعوتي وإعطاء هذه الفرصة للمشاركة في هذه الجلسة كما وأتشرف أن أكون أحد المشاركين والمتحدثين في جلسة يشارك فيها نخبة مميزة من البروفيسورية والدكاترة المتخصصين في هذا المجال وأبدأ بالتعريف للأسرة التي نجتمع جميعنا اليوم لكي نتحاور ونتناقش حول قيم الأسرة وكيف وكيفية المحافظة على قيم الأسرة في هذه العولمة والعالم المتغير. الأسرة هي اللبنة الأساسية التي يقوم عليها المجتمع وقد اهتمت كافة المواثيق الدولية بالأسرة وبفئاتها المختلفة إذ تنص المادة 16 من الإعلان العالمي لحقوق الإنسان على أن الأسرة هي الخلية الطبيعية والأساسية لوحدة المجتمع ولها حق التمتع بحماية المجتمع والدولة هذا التعريف أكد عليه أيضا الإعلان العربي لحقوق الإنسان الصادر في عام 2004 الفقرة واحد منه المادة 33 حيث جاء أن الأسرة هي الوحدة الطبيعية والأساسية للمجتمع وأن الزواج بين الرجل والمرأة هو أساس تكوينها الجملة الأخيرة من التعريف في الإعلان العربي تشكل الأساس الرئيسي لمفهوم وتكوين الأسرة وفق القوانين الطبيعية والقيم الإسلامية والعربية وهو أساس هام أود أن أؤكد عليه يشكل فارقا قيميا أساسيا بين عالمنا الإسلامي العربي وثقافات أخرى في تشكيل قيم الأسرة ما هي وظائف هذه الأسرة؟ وظائفها هي الأصل في تكوينها في الحقيقة والدافع لبقائها واستمرارها والحفاظ على كينونتها والارتقاء بها لها ثلاث وظائف المحور الوظيفي المحور البنائي والمحور التكويني ورأس هذه الوظائف هو الإنجاب الإبقاء الاستمرارية ثم توفير سبل العيش والحياة الكريمة لأعضائها والتنشئة والرعاية الاجتماعية إشباع الحاجات العاطفية عندهم لما نقول عاطفية يعني نقول الحب الحماية العطف الحنان الأمان إلى آخره أيضا التربية التعليم توفير التوازن الاستقرار التصالح مع النفس والتصالح مع البيئة المحيطة هذه من أهم أيضا أدوار الأسرة لأفراد أس... لأفرادها الحديث عن الأسرة وعن منظومة القيم بالذات لابد من أن يأخذ أبعادا مختلفة عما هو سائد في معظم الدراسات حيث أن ومن مراجعتي حتى للاستعداد لهذه الجلسة المراجع والمنشورة جميعها تستند في مرجعياتها إلى الخبرات العلمية في بيئات وثقافات مختلفة بعض الشيء عنا بينما يصبح لزاما علينا في الدراسات الاجتماعية الاستناد إلى المجتمعات المحلية دائما فأنا سعيدة جدا بمشاركة زملاء من المجتمعات من المجتمع المحلي اليوم في هذا النقاش في المراجع في الحقيقة في معظمها دراسات متصلة بدول وثقافات ومجتمعات غربية. 
على الرقم من ذلك وعلى الرقم من التشابه في أهداف وقايات النسق الاجتماعي المسمى بالأسرة إلا أن التكوين واحتياجات التكوين والبناء واحتياجات البناء والوظائف واحتياجاتها في الأسرة تختلف تمام الاختلاف فيما بين الأسر في بقاع العالم اختلاف بين وكبير في الحقيقة يأتي عليه تسارع النمو والتغيير والآثار المترتبة على سهولة التواصل والاتصال وتبادل المعلومات والثقافات يفرض علينا اليوم اهتمام كبير بهذا الحقل وتحديد مبتقانا منه وقاياتنا وأهدافنا وتثبيت أركانه لذلك أنا جدا ممتنة للصندوق على اهتمامه بدراسة القيم قيم الأسرة دور الأسرة البنائي يشمل منظومة القيم التي تحكم الحفاظ على النسيج الاجتماعي للمجتمع تماسك وصحة أفراده كلما كانت قيم الأسرة متجذرة كلما كان المجتمع متماسك وآمن فقد أثبتت الدراسات الحديثة أن استقرار المجتمع لن يكون ممكنا إلا بتكامل توفير الحاجيات أولا الاقتصادية والاجتماعية والثقافية فعملية تشكيل المكون الثقافي والقيمي للطفل تبدأ مع دورة حياة الإنسان الأولى فمن أهم وظائف التنشئة وقايات الأسرة توافر بيئة صحية مستقرة متوازنة تساهم في المكون القيمي والمعرفي للفرد داخل الأسرة لذا مؤخرا انتشر مفهوم الأمان الاجتماعي واتسع ليشمل إلى جانب الاستقرار المادي والاجتماعي الصحة النفسية للأسرة والصحة النفسية لأفراد الأسرة وهما مرتبطان بأهمية بأهم بأهم عملية وظيفية للأسرة وهي عملية التنشئة الاجتماعية ما هي التنشئة الاجتماعية؟ هي المعارف، القيم، السلوكيات المؤسسة لإنسان سوي، معافى، متصالح مع نفسه ومع المجتمع ومع قيمه وإذا بقيت أن أركز على الأسرة القطرية فالأسرة القطرية تستمد وجودها وشرعيتها من نبع الثقافة المحلية المرتبطة بالدين وتمثل الأسرة سلطة اجتماعية متفردة وقائمة بذاتها يحكمها إلى جانب الشرعية الدينية كذلك الشرعية المجتمعية نسق من الأنظمة الاجتماعية والثقافية والسياسية والتعليمية إلى جانب الضمير الأخلاقي النابع من الدين والتقاليد هذا الكيان أو الخلية هو وحدة بنائية تقوم بأول مهام التنشئة الاجتماعية وأقصد بها الأسرة الآن الحديث عن القيم يعني الحديث عن الحياة السوية والفطرة السليمة التي هي جزء من تعاليم كافة الديانات السماوية وهي ركيزة أساسية للحفاظ على نسيج المجتمع مثلا الإنصاف، العدل، الأمانة، الصدق، النظام والانتظام، احترام الآخر، احترام حقوقهم، تحمل المسؤولية، العطاء، حفظ الحقوق، توغير الكبير، رعاية الصغير، الكرم، إكرام الضيف، العطف على الفقير، المسكين، اليتيم وغيره من مكارم الأخلاق بعض القيم التي ذكرتها تعتبر من مهام الدولة مثل المساواة والعدالة الاجتماعية والحكم الراشد هي مهام للدولة لتكون أساسا متينا على مستوى المجتمع والأفراد والزواج في حد ذاته والأسرة يمثلان منظومة كاملة من القيم حقوق وواجبات تساهم بشكل أساسي في تشكيل العلاقات على مستوى الأفراد والأسر والمجتمع وتحدد مسؤولية الفرد تجاه نفسه وعلى مستوى أسرته ومجتمعه في مجتمعنا القطري تحكم الزواج وهو مؤسسة متكاملة لا يشتمل فقط على الشخصين المتعاقدين إنما تتعدى ذلك إلى حدود الأهل والعائلة والقبيلة والعادات والتقاليد وكل الأصول المرتبطة بذلك هذه المرحلة وإلى حين أن يكتمل تكوين الأسرة تمر بعدة عمليات تبدأ بالتنشئة الاجتماعية للفرد لتتدرج إلى المكون الثقافي له ثم تعرج, إلى تعرج من ذلك إلى السلوك والحقوق والواجبات والنهج الذي يختاره في الحياة وهو بذلك مرتبط بنهج جماعي وليس فردي ولا يملك فيه الخيار لذلك نعد الزواج عملية معقدة بعض الشيء يلعب فيها الوضع الاقتصادي والاجتماعي للفرد دورا كبيرا في تحديد ملامحها مراحل تكوين الأسرة وعلاقتها بتشكيل قيم أفرادها 
هذه المراحل تحمل في باطنها عدة عمليات تنشأ منها عدة احتياجات تبدأ بالتنشئة الاجتماعية والقيم والأخلاق المكون الثقافي والاجتماعي للفرد اختياره في الحياة خياراته لتكوين أسرته كيف يعقد الزواج والتزامه بالشرعية الدينية والتقاليد المستمدة من الواقع المحلي ما هي التشريعات والقوانين التي ترعى وتحمى هذا المكون أي الأسرة العادات والتقاليد والطقوس المرتبطة بقيام وتكوين الأسرة طريقة اختيار كل ذلك وأنا متأكدة من أن زملائي في الأوراق القادمة سوف يركزون عليه بشكل جدا جدا متعمق ورائع هذه المراحل والعمليات تقابلها احتياجات تتطلب الإسهام في تغيير الاتجاهات لدى الأفراد والجماعات والمجموعات في المجتمع وتشكيل البنية الأساسية للمكون الثقافي الذي يفرز قيما وثباتا واستقرارا يستند إلى مرجعية تحتكم إلى قيمنا الثابتة والأصيلة دائما نحن نحمل قيمنا معنا الثابتة ونتوارثها جيلا عن جيل إلا أننا نطبقها بدرجات مختلفة ومستويات مختلفة تعتمد على ما واجهناه واختلطنا به وانفتحنا عليه من ثقافات أخرى حيث إذا نظرنا إلى مخطط النظام الأيكولوجي سنجد عوامل كثيرة متداخلة تتمثل في الأسرة، العائلة، القبيلة، الثقافة، ونمط العيش والعادات والتقاليد الاجتماعية وعادات الزواج وعادات أيضا كثيرة من النظام القضائي ونمط العيش وما يسمى باللايف ستايل وكيفية استخدام الوقت ونوعية الحياة بالإضافة للمشاكل الناجمة من الحداثة والمتمثلة في تدفق المعلومات وانهيار الحدود الجغرافية ما بيننا ووسائط التواصل الاجتماعي بالإضافة إلى تحسين نوعية الحياة كل ذلك خلق لدينا تحديات اليوم في تواجه الأسرة في قيمها وكيف تحافظ على قيمها فهل يستمر الحال على خط مستقيم؟ بلا شك لا لا أبدا العمل الاجتماعي عمل متغير صعودا وهبوطا في تأثيره في تأثره بالمحيط من حوله فنتائج ومؤشرات الدراسات الاجتماعية تشير إلى أن الكثير من التحديات والإشكالية التي تختلف وتتباين في ظروفها وملابساتها باختلاف وتباين البيئة المحيطة ودولة قطر كدولة مستقبلة لمختلف الثقافات حول العالم وبوجود أسر تمثل هذا التعدد تواجه بلا شك الكثير من المتغيرات التي تحمل في باطنها الكثير من المعيقات والتحديات والتحديات منها التحول إلى النمط الاستهلاكي الذي نراه اليوم ونلمسه في أسرنا وفي قيمها وتأثيرها على القيم التي ورثناها جيلا عن جيل الثقافية والدينية تأثير وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي أيضا في تأجيج الصراعات ما بين ساعات عصبية وساعات عشائرية وأثرها السلبي في تماسك المجتمع هذه الفجوة الشاسعة بين الأجيال والناجمة عن الانفتاح إلى العالم والاختلاط مع ثقافات أخرى الاهتمام بمظهر الحضارة وقشورها وليس منتجها المعرفي والفكري ومضمونها الثري كل هذه تحديات اليوم تواجهنا وأذكر على ما أذكر خلال تاريخي في العقدين الماضيين من العمل في المجال الاجتماعي و وتشرفي بأن أرأس في يوم من الأيام مركز الإنماء الاجتماعي أثناء خلال مساري المهني والذي كان يطالب بشكل دائم إلى دراسات تقيم أو دراسات وأبحاث تدرس مدى التغيير الذي طرأ على القيم في الأسرة القطرية حيث كنا نطالب بتنفيذ برامج سواء كانت اجتماعية أو توعوية وكنا في الأساس نود أن نعتمد على أو نقيس مدى التغير الذي حدث في القيم لكي نفصل ونصمم برامجنا على هذا المنظور في الختام أود أن أركز على بعض من الأمنيات أو المقترحات أو التوصيات وأبدأ ب لابد من أن نتبنى أو لابد أن يتم التبني منهج أو نهج تشريعي من منظور أسري يحمي مصالح الأسرة ككيان والتركيز على أهمية دور الدولة في رعاية شؤون أفراد الأسرة بكافة فئاتها نهج تشريعي والحمد لله اليوم فعلا إحنا في دولة قطر في يعني في الاتجاه أن يكون لدينا أيضا مزيد من التشريعات التي تضمن حماية الأسرة وأفراد الأسرة وحماية قيمها الاهتمام أيضا بدور الأسرة في الحفاظ على القيم المجتمعية الراسخة 
هذا يتطلب في الحقيقة وجود مؤسسات ذات كفاءة عالية تتنبأ بالمشاكل وتعمل على التخطيط لمجابهتها قبل حدوثها وأتمنى فعلا من كافة المراكز الموجودة أو المؤسسات التي يمكن أيضا أن نعتمد عليها ومنها صندوق الصندوق القطري للبحث العلمي أن يتنبأ بهذه المشاكل وما جلستنا اليوم إلا أيضا Um, so now uh, you have two minutes left. Two minutes left. Looks like we lost uh, Mr. Amal. Mr. Amal, can you hear us? Uh, we will move to the next presenter, I believe Dr. Amal, Mr. Amal was about to... Uh, we wait for her for two minutes to just uh, conclude. Please bear with us. So uh, while we're waiting for Mr. Amal, I just want to point out that we have um, uh, Mr. Amal's presentation, as you can, uh, as you have, hearing, have been hearing, is in um, in Arabic. Uh, but uh, the other presentations, with exception of one, will be in English. So please feel free to ask your questions in both languages, if you will, and um, uh, and we'll be happy to uh, uh, address it to the. To the person that you want to answer your question. Uh, if Ms. Amal is not here, I think we will we will have to move to the uh, next presenter. We have one more minute, and this is a technological hiccup. I apologize for this. Okay, I think we have to move to the next presenter. Okay, uh, next presentation is on <clears throat> the projects with the title "Social: The Social Construction of Motherhood in Qatari Society. The LPI for this project is Dr. Asma al Atia uh, from Qatar University, but we have uh, Professor Ramzi from Lusail University who's going to make the presentation. On behalf of the team, Professor Ramsey, it's all yours, and you have 15 minutes. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah. Let me just turn on the Thank camera. Can you, you please on. turn on your camera, uh, yes, Professor? Sure. Please, if you don't mind. And I could I ask all the speakers to do the same when the time comes, unless, of course, we have here some of you who do not want, and we respected that. Uh, so, Professor Ramsey, you have 15 minutes. Please go ahead. Sure, thank you. Um, so let, let me. Um, so this this project was funded uh, by uh, QNRF. It was an NPRP. I think it was submitted. It was awarded in November 12. We started, uh, I think, in 2013. We had some hiccups with the IRB, uh, and there were three of us. Let me share the screen here. Dr. Viruru is was on board. Uh, can I share the screen, or it's not allowed here? Dr. Abdullah. Yes, uh, please go ahead. We want uh, to do the presentation. It's, it's not working in my. Uh, is there a problem there? Uh, uh, sharing uh, tab is not working for you. No. Are you? Did you? Uh, did you limit uh, our ability to share? No. We limited nothing. Uh, Shabdallah, could you please check if uh, we are in? Um, 
we, if, if everything is fine. Give me one moment. I'm just checking, and I'm also with uh, trying to fix the issue with the, with the set. I'm just give me a moment. Okay. It so says here only meeting organizers and presenter can share, but I am so I'm not a presenter. Is that how you define me? You must uh, you define me a as a presenter so I can share. We okay. have your anyway, presentation. I'll, I'll go on until uh, this is fixed because I have a uh, I have tables and other stuff that I need to present. Uh, now it's working. That's okay. okay. You try again. Yeah, please. It's working now. Thank you so much. So let me just take you to the PowerPoint. And then I'll. Uh, here we are. Good. So again, uh, social construction of motherhood. Uh, three of us, Radhika, uh, Dr. Asma, and myself. Again, uh, this was uh, awarded in 2012, uh, started 2013. And I think we, uh, we came up with the results 2014-15. The outcome of this project, let me take you to the last slide, I'll start from the end, uh, is came up to, am I sharing or? Am I sharing? Please change it no? to presentation yes, mode at the, at the at the bottom. The uh, am I sharing or no? If you make it full screen, it's better. Okay, but you can see my PowerPoint, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. It's so let perfect. me uh, go down and tell you what the outcomes were, which are uh, which resulted in in a uh, a couple of publications, right? Uh, three publications, and then it it uh, it resulted in another uh, grant uh, with uh, Dr. Sharif, Dr. Viruru, and Dr. Islami, which I think Dr. Sharif will be presenting today. So uh, so this is uh, this is really generating stuff, which is really nice. Um, so let's go back to the beginning, which is about uh, motherhood. So let me just start with uh, with this idea of motherhood, and I think there has been several discourses on this. Uh, one of uh, one of the predominant, well, I wouldn't say predominant discourse, but uh, some of the critical theory discourses is that um, is that the mother's experience are deeply influenced. Uh, by this concept of the motherhood institution. Um, and that is centered around the patriarchal discourses. Uh, however, we can't leave out from this discourse uh, our grounded Islamic principles in this part of the world. Uh, so I started off with this concept of, uh, you know, that that motherhood is is an institution, but there are other there are other uh, perspectives on motherhood, and uh, that that motherhood is done naturally, involuntarily, and instinctively. Uh, physiologically, I mean, we all know that, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, I mean, when when does motherhood start? And we know physiologically that when a woman is pregnant, right? This is scientifically. Uh, proven. Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's proven. Uh, that what happens is that um, the woman suppresses her immunity system to allow the foreign entity, which is the embryonic cells, to grow. Uh, so th there, in all of this, in all of this, there is at the beginning, at the beginning of inception, some sort of sacrifice that is happening. And uh, you know, women are not aware of it, but um, it's there. And uh, so, you know, uh, so when when you when you suppress your immunity, you allow for uh, you know all types of diseases and bacteria to enter your body. Uh, and what this all tells you is that is that motherhood might be more of a uh, a physiological uh, uh, state of being. In any case, uh, but there is another discourse, and the important discourse which we took uh, in this study is is basically that uh, motherhood is a social construction, uh, and it's a social phenomena. Uh, that that motherhood is much more of a cultural practice. Uh, and designed in face of societal uh, conditions. 
And that is, uh, that is that many aspects of our lives, of what we do daily, is as as mothers or even as fathers, might be socially constructed. Uh, certainly, I think if you look at motherhood about fifty or seventy years ago in this part of the world, and of course there there are parts in in Africa uh, that are practicing this. Uh, that mothered is not one individual, right? That takes care of children, infants. Uh, that mothering is done by blood mothers, other mothers, woman-centered networks. And if you look at mothering, probably 70, 80 years ago, this was probably the practice of motherhood. Now, with globalism, with the, with the run for achievement and individualism, with the eradication of uh, the extended family, uh, the growth of the nuclear family, all of that impinged on or centered the role of the mother to a single individual, the woman, the mother. Um, now, what is it? Why is that? You know, why study motherhood? I mean, I mean, that's that's another important issue that I want to talk about, especially uh, in in terms of in terms of you know this idea of Qatar being a global economy. Well, we want to understand the role of mothers also in the workforce and how they can deal, uh, how are they her or how their mothering practices. Uh, may impact future workforce uh, and which eventually the development of children uh, will generally impact the development of the modern modern cutter. So uh, we wanted also to study basically understand in the study uh, the mother's understanding of children's development. Uh, so what were the research questions? There were several research questions we asked. There were many more in this study. Um, so one of the questions was, how do Qatari women describe motherhood uh, in, in tasks and what they do basically? And in light of the conflicting discourses of motherhood, so when I say the conflicting discourses, we're talking about, you know, Islamic principles. We're talking the feminist perspective, um, so on and so on. Uh, another important question: Has wealth in this country generated? Uh, well, the wealth generated through carbo, uh, hydrocarbon um, industries uh, created different roles for mothering. And the lastly, we wanted to study what meaning they ascribe to mothering and how does that conflict with other identities? Um, so how did we do this? Well, um, we um, we did a, a mixed method. We approached this through a mixed method approach on the quan-qual approach, quantitative qualitative model where we put equal emphasis on the quantitative and uh, qualitative data to obtain different, you know, to obtain the, the different perspectives uh, from mothers. Uh, the way we did this is we uh, we created um, we created social media accounts. And through uh, network sampling, we almost got about uh, 280 women uh, to respond to our questionnaires. And, uh, and 30 women which we interviewed. So um, the study uh, in terms of the qualitative part, we uh, 
uh, we we asked participants to provide insights, emotions, and fe and feelings about their roles as mothers. Uh, and then in the quantitative part, <coughs> we developed a questionnaire along three dimensions. Okay. Uh, this being child reading practices, questions, geographies of motherhood questions. Uh, and uh, identity questions. Let's go to, uh, this is the sample basically, just as I just talked about. In addition to the 30 women that we interviewed, we actually interviewed three fathers, which of course led to the ideas of um, creating a subsequent study, which was, I mean, Dr. Maha will talk about that study, who she's probably the lead PI on that. The surveys were English and Arabic. They were electronic. They were put on social media or through email, whatever was uh, available to the participants. Um, some demographic information as a result of this study. Well, we had 82% of the women who are mothers were married, 4.6 divorced, 6% 6 widowed, 60% uh, had undergraduate degrees, 20% had high school degrees. Uh, about 37.7% of the women had four children living with them. 15% had six, inching, six children living with them. Let's jump into the results. Um, start with uh, this idea of mothering, basically. I mean, again, what is mothering? Well, mothering is caring, is bonding, uh, is, uh, is sharing, is uh, emotionally emotion uh, emotional supporting their children and doing other tasks which are very important uh, for the development of the child for instance uh, you know toilet uh, toileting is an important aspect of child development uh, bathing cooking uh, for the child we found out that mothers, basically, I, I say women versus, I mean, I, I use them interchangeably with mothers. We found out that mothers, 71% of the mothers did the bathing, 66.5% did, did the toileting. Uh, however, in terms of cooking, 366 And that is explained possibly because of domestic help. Uh, again, cooking was 60% was done by, by domestic help. Uh, Bathing 13.4% was done by domestic health, toileting by 12.7%. Um, so if we look at the father's role, we look at the percentages. Uh, very low. Professor very Ramzi, low, um, very uh, low. Professor Ramzi, you have, you yeah, have yes, two sir. minutes left. Two minutes left. Two minutes. Uh, so, yes, okay. So if we look at okay. the father's role, um, we've got, we see that very, very minimal uh, uh, role. Uh, uh, so, uh, in, in terms of uh, child reading, where do mothers, where do they locate themselves? Where do they find the geographies to find advice and so on and so forth about the, you know, in terms of mothering? You know, uh, we found out that mothers go to family members, friends, internet, child reading books, medical professions. Who had the strongest influence on them? You know, it's interesting enough, the uh, their mothers and their fathers. When it comes to their husbands being part of, you know, the child reading practices, we find that that uh, the husbands had a completely uh, uh, absent role in terms of fathering and parenting. Uh, we found also that most of our participants were affluent. Uh, we found 60% had domestic helps. Uh, we found that mothers did uh, essential and qualitative parts. I mean, uh, you know, quality stuff with their children. Uh, uh, even those who are working, it seems like the, they were doing their best to mother. Uh, let me share some of the qualitative stuff with you because I'm running out of the time. Uh, there was an, an element of frustration among mothers. 
so one of the interview uh, uh, responses s said the following. I'm very stressed on the issue. I don't I don't leave babies with housekeeper from bathroom to bed. Uh, I feed them, bath them, char uh, change dresses, cleaning, washing and so on and so forth. And here's another frustrated person. Feel lost with my work, not getting enough time to work to go back home and, and work. Have have main lunch with them, have to be with them for lunch, but always feel like I'm giving I'm not giving them enough. So there's an element of guilt. Um, uh, please conclude. conclude it, Dr. Uh, I'm just going to conclude here very quickly. So so an element uh, which is very important here in this all of this is that is that women are overwhelmed. They need institutional support. Uh, there's a there's a lack of role. There's a lack of parenting role by the father. Uh, uh, women are generally valued and celebrated as mothers in this society, but again, as a conclusion, they lack the support they need. Uh, and there's this discourse that women should take it all. Women should be the main parenting sub, I mean, uh, role in in parenting in in in, in developing and and raising children. Um, so that's that's all I have to say. I, I'm running out of time. I wish I had more time. I need to talk about other things too. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you, Professor Ramsey. Um, uh, a quick question, but by the way, before I give the opportunity for the audience to ask questions, uh, is Ms. Amal here? Ms. Amal al -Manai? I think you were cut off. Uh... Yes, yes, hello. Uh, could you? Could you want to say? Uh, do you do you like to say one or two words uh, before we move to the audience to ask questions to Professor Ramsey? One uh, one minute well, to wrap up. Thank you so very much for giving me the uh, yani the chance, the opportunity to say just my uh, conclusion. أنا توقفت عند التوصيات التي كنت أتأمل أن تدرج ضمن النتائج هذه الجلسة ومنها طبعا والأهم هو استكمال أو مواصلة الدراسات والأبحاث في مجال دراسة التقييم أو دراسة سوري التغيير اللي يطرأ على قيم الأسرة لكي تتمكن المؤسسات الاجتماعية من إدراج وتصميم برامجها ومبادراتها على هذا الأساس. العمل المستمر لترسيخ التوازن في التأقلم مع التغيير إحنا ما عندنا تأقلم في التق... مع التغيير مش كلنا التعميم مش جائز ولكن نحتاج أن نحفظ توازن لكي نتمكن من التغيير لابد من دراسة الظواهر الاجتماعية والثقافية والاقتصادية الناجمة من المتغيرات الاقتصادية في متغير اقتصادي في العالم كله لكن ما في دراسات اجتماعية تكافئ هذا التغيير لابد من أن يكون هناك برامج لتقليص الفجوة بين الأجيال اليوم العقد الزمني الواحد يمثل فارق كبير بين الأجيال في الثقافة والقيم والقدرة على التأقلم الاستخدام الآمن والمرشد والابتكاري للوسائط التواصل الاجتماعي أنا شاكرة جدا بروفيسور عبد الإلهي وشاكرة جدا بروفيسور رمز شكرا دكتور Thank you so much Thank you for making it and I'm sorry about the technical uh, problems that we have been experiencing Could we um... I ask the audience if they have one or two questions for Professor Ramsey. And by the way, if you want, you can actually ask your question uh, verbally. We will open the mic for you and you could uh, just raise your hands and we will be able to see you. OK, I can see someone. Um, uh, Vilera? Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, barely, yes. A, okay. a bit louder would be fine. Ah, just a minute. Okay. So, um, is that better? Much better. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, thank you very much for the the presentation. It's a very interesting research, and. Um, uh, it's a theme that um, I'm sure struggle uh, most uh, uh, women and also uh, the husbands. And um, it, it's really hard uh, to find a balance. I know that your study uh, um, had end to understand how women are performing and what's going on. But my question is about... Uh, um, is, is there um, a recommendation? Since uh, uh, we have here this uh, characteristic of a high percentage of expatriates, so most um, uh, mothers, they are uh, 
far away from uh, their relatives. And um, I don't know the percentage of women who have to work, but uh, I believe- uh, Please go to, go to the question. I'm sorry to cut you off because we are- no, no, no. Oh, okay, so, okay. So, so my question is, if there is any study on a recommendation on how uh, should this balance take place between uh, uh, women's duties and men's duties um, uh, about the collaboration of uh, maids, if, if, if there are studies that could be recommended uh, for expectorates that uh, are not uh, counting with their families. That's that's my question. Excellent. Thank you so much. Sorry, uh, sorry. That was Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Professor Ramzi. Uh, Can you hear me? Sorry, 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 sorry. I stopped it off. Mm -hmm. I had my microphone off. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, you know, creating a balance, uh, creating an awareness, uh, maybe you know uh, this idea of of you know uh, education and deconstructing this idea of motherhood, maybe maybe um, having family um, uh, family uh, counseling uh, uh, before marriage. Uh, I, mean, I think um, Dr. Amal might. Uh, Doctor, who was the last speaker? Dr. Amal, I think, right? She yeah. might have uh, better policy issues, better planning issues regarding family, uh, family preservation, um, the, all that source. I mean, Look, I mean, I mean our uh, findings, our is, findings did not, did to not lend to any or... recommendation in regards to to your questions. Let's let's put it this way. But I'm just here, okay. kind of reflecting on on how this could be it could be uh, could be solved basically how could that balance be reached okay thank you, thank you. Uh, anita i have to apologize we we i have to stick to the time and the next presenter should have start now uh, but i promise i'll come back to you uh, next time if we have sufficient time but uh, please bear with us okay um, next speaker is uh, dr uh, kane lee Associate Professor, uh, Qatar University. And the, uh, his project is the fertility of Qatari and other GCC nationals in a context of high dependence on foreign labor, an innovative approach for policy making on family building. Uh, Dr. Dr. Lee, you have 15 minutes. Dr. Lee, can you find me? Uh, Hello. Hello? Yes, Dr. Lee. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you okay. All right, okay. Good morning and thank you for coming to my presentation. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, our NPRP project, uh, which is funded by Qatar Foundation. Uh, Dr. Lee, sorry, could you open your camera, please? Much better, yes. thank you, Doctor. Uh, put it into full screen, please, and go ahead. All right, okay. So uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about fertility in Qatar. Uh, this is a, a project funded by Qatar Foundation. And uh, because of the time constraint, I will only talk, I, I only give you some basic information about uh, fertility uh, in Qatar. Here is the outline of the presentation. Uh, first, uh, I will talk about the household survey we conducted in Qatar. And uh, secondly, I will talk about the respondent characteristics. And uh, next, I will talk about the main topic, which is the fertility in Qatar. And finally, uh, we will talk about the project outcome in terms of uh, report, policy brief, publication, and uh, presentation in the conference. Uh, we conducted the household survey in Qatar in 2018, uh, December 2018. It is a nationally representative household survey. 
we have uh, 512 category household in the survey. Um, there are 600 category ever married women from 15 to 49 uh, completed the interview. The questionnaire in the survey is based on the demographic and health survey, which is conducted in many countries around the world. The questionnaire have two sections. In the first section, we interview the head of the household to get information about the household characteristic and the individual characteristics. In the second section, we interview the eligible woman to get information about the woman and her husband characteristics, the marital status, reproduction, children mortality, fertility preference, family planning, and many other Uh, now, I would like to talk about the respondent characteristics in terms of education, labor force participation, and salary. Uh, you, you can see that uh, the woman, the Catholic woman education is, is very high. Actually, it is the highest in GCC countries. Uh, the education of the woman is also uh, very similar to the education level of the husband. As you can see here, 38.7% of the women have university degree or higher, which is very similar to her husband. 38.5% have university degree also. So the woman, Catholic women have similar education level compared to her husband. In terms of labor force participation, Catholic women enter the labor force a lot compared to other GCC countries. Actually, we have the highest rate of labor force participation for Qatari women compared to uh, other GCC countries. And this level is comparable to some Western countries. However, if you compare the woman labor force participation to her husband participation, you can see that uh, the, the the husband have higher level of participation, and also if you look at the unemployment rate, uh, the woman have 12.8 percent unemployed compared to her husband less than one percent. So the Qatari woman have much higher unemployment rate compared to her husband. Now look at the salary. Uh, as you can see, about about half of the women making twenty to forty thousand kata rian per month. When you compare the woman salary to the husband salary, you can see that the woman salary is much lower compared to her husband. This one point eight percent of the women making more than sixty thousand rian per month, when the husband eight point three percent making more than 60,000 riyal. Now, uh, I will try to give you uh, a basic information about the fertility of the respondent uh, in Qatar. I will talk about the total fertility rate, fertility rate by characteristics, the desire for more children, and what is the ideal number of children. First, the total fertility rate. As you can see here, uh, we see the highest fertility rate for women from 25 to 29. And then this fertility rate decline when the woman get older. This is very similar to other countries. Uh, here, this is the 3.2 is a total fertility rate for Qatari women. Uh, this fertility, uh, this total fertility rate is higher compared to 2.8 in the MENA region, 1.8 in the US, 1.62 in China, and 1.6 in European Union. So you can see that the total fertility rate for Qatari women is high compared to other countries. Now I will break down the total fertility rate by characteristics. Uh, as you can see here, the fertility rate is higher for non-working women. 
3.7 compared to 2.8 for working women. Also, the fertility rate is higher for lower education level, women with, women with lower level of education, 4.8 here. Also, the rate is also higher for women coming from lower household income, 4.6. Uh, this, this is very consistent with the previous study in other countries. Women with lower education usually have higher number of children. Women who are not working usually have higher number of children. We also asked women about her desire to have more children. As you can see here, 29% of the women say that they want to have children very soon. 31% of the women say that they want to have a children later. So majority of the women would like to have another children. Only 29% of the children say that they don't want to have more children. We also asked the woman about the ideal number of children. And you can see a correlation between the, this is the, the ideal number and the real number of children. So a woman who have higher number of children also have higher ideal number of children. However, it's very interesting that if you look at number four here, the woman with four children, actually four children, she also have a similar ideal number of children, which is 4.1. However, for women who have five or six children, she actually want to have less children here. And for the woman who have less than four children, for example, a woman with two children, she want to have more children. So you can see the equilibrium of number four. A woman who have four children, she's happy with that. But a woman who have less than four children, she want to have more. But a woman who have more than four children, she want to have less. So we have an equilibrium of number four here. We also asked uh, the woman about the pressure to have more children. Uh, so one out of five women report that uh, they have certain pressure from the family or from the relative to have more children. Uh, in terms of uh, gender preference for the children, uh, overwhelming majority of the women do not have any preference for boy or girl. However, we still see that there's more women who prefer boy compared to a girl. As you can see here, about 18% prefer boy and only 8% prefer girl. Uh, the limitation, the main limitation of the, of, the, of the survey is that we have a very small sample size. Uh, we have only 512 households and about more than 600 uh, women. So it would be much better if we can have uh, more household in the survey so that we can have a better precision in the estimate. Also, uh, it's pretty hard to interview the second or the third uh, woman in the, in the household. As you know, the survey is pretty long. With, uh, it's about one hour interview. So after we completed the first woman, it's, it's difficult to interview the second or the third woman in the household. So uh, I just presented the basic information about the survey we did in Qatar. Uh, the project has uh, several other components. And from the survey, we come up with several uh, research and publication. So there are, uh, we did numerous report, policy brief, presentation in the workshop, conference, inside and outside Qatar. Uh, we got, so far, we got two uh, publications in peer review uh, journal. Uh, we also have another two under review, uh, also in peer, 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 journal, peer, peer, peer review journal. So uh, that is everything about the presentation. Uh, thank you. If you have any question, uh, please go ahead and ask. 
Yeah, thank you. I think we have a time for uh, uh, one or two questions. Uh, uh, Anita, could you ask your question, please? It was was it uh, for Ram, Dr. Ramzi or because I can see your hand is still uh, up. Could you please ask your questions? Go ahead. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum salam. Thank you very much. My com question and comment was, well, the question was actually for Dr. Ramsey and the woman before, Valerie, she raised um, the question. So I just decided to put some comments in the section. And just briefly, my comment is that the, uh, we need media campaigns to change the focus from motherhood to parenthood, change the language. We need to involve the fathers and male figures in the family more in parenthood to socially reconstruct motherhood to parenthood. I think that that would actually help bring about the emotional support that the family needs to rear the children. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your comment. Uh, uh, one more question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Lee. Now we move to our next presenter. Marriage and traditional and tradition exploring the foundations of Qatari first cousin. Uh, Professor Kaltham Al Anim will, from Qadhan University will be the next speaker. And her topic is on marriage and tradition, especially uh, the uh, marriage uh, the marriage for the first cousin. So this presentation will be in Arabic, but uh, please feel free to ask your questions in both Arabic and language. Professor Kaltham, the yes. floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa أحاول أنا أرفع ال presentation بس مبطا أوكي لحظة شوي Does it appear? Yes, uh, we can see it. Shukran. First of all, thank you to the Qatari Center for the invitation to this important event, which I think is great in the field that we are looking for in the family, and the issues that we are dealing with, and the issues that we are dealing with. And this will help us to improve our understanding لاحتياجات الأسرة والتغيرات اللي تمر بيها في هذه المرحلة وبيساعد هذه في المستقبل إن إحنا نلبي احتياجات طبعاً هو البحث مبني أو البرزنتيشن مبني على دراسة فازت بمنحة من الصندوق القطري اسمها الزواج والتقاليد استكشاف قص الزواج الأقارب لدى القطريين تكون من فريق متنوع التخصصات من العلوم الاجتماعية والعلوم الصحية الطبية والنفسية أنا رئيس الفريق والدكتور توفيق بن عمران رئيس عيادة الأمراض الوراثية في مؤسسة حمد والدكتور محمد عبد العليم أخصائي الطب النفسي في مؤسسة حمد والدكتورة جهينة العيسى أستاذ علم الاجتماع في جامعة قطر والدكتورة فاطمة الكبيسي رئيس قسم العلوم الاجتماعية حاليا طبعا أنا أود أشكر الصندوق القطري طبعا على هذه المنحة وكانت كبيرة وساعدتنا على إنجاز مجموعة من الدراسات وأن نحن نستقطب بعض المؤسسات ذات العلاقة لعل أهمها هو تعاون مؤسسة حمد الطبية وكما توفر لنا أن نحن نتشارك مع المجلس الأعلى لشؤون الأسرة السابق وجهاز التخطيط التنموي والإحصاء ومعهد سسري في جامعة قطر في تطبيق الدراسات الميدانية 
في خلفية عن المشروع طبعا لفت انتباه هناك فريق ان الامراض الوراثية في المنطقة خصوصا في المنطقة العربية ودول الخليج مرتفعة وتصل الى 350 مرض منها 200 مرض وراثي ذو طابع متنحي يعكس انتشار زواج الاقارب طبعا العلم اظهر لنا بوضوح ان الزواج من الاقارب يزيد بشكل كبير مخاطر الاضطرابات والعيوب الوراثية وتشير تحليلات أنماط الزواج في المجتمعات الخليجية لأن هذه الممارسات منتشرة وسائدة في كل دول الخليج وحتى في الدول العربية في بلدان الشام في المغرب العربي في مصر في العراق طبعا في هذا النوع من الزواج يعتبر, يعتبر الانتماء القبلي عاملة وعنصر مهم بشكل بارز ويساهم في توجيه عملية اختيار الزواج طبيعة تركيبة الأسرة في المنطقة ممتدة مكونة من عدة أجيال هذه النمط من العائلات يساهم في تحديد الاختيار الزواجي للمقبلين على الزواج ويسودها تفضيل الزواج من الأقارب بسبب بنيتها وتركيبتها الاجتماعية المخاطر وراء هذا النوع من الزواج طبعا القرابه تزيد من فرص مشاركه شخصين في نفس الاليات المرضيه بسبب التطابق في النسب يزيد من خطر الاصابه بالامراض الصبغيه الجسديه المتنحيه يزيد من مخاطر الاصابه بالظروف متعدده العوامل طبعا هذا النوع من الزواج ساهم في صراحه و في زيادة الاضطرابات الوراثية في قطر وفي دول الخليج في بعض الأسر نجد مرض نوع مرض منتشر بشكل معين وشيء يعني محزن بعض الأسر حتى ينتشر عندهم العمى هذه خلفية إحصائية عن عقود الزواج اللي تمت في قطر من الأعوام 2007 و15-17 و19 لو لاحظتوا مجموع زيجات الأقارب التوتل لازال عند نفس المستوى ولم يتغير زواج الأقارب من ابن العم الثاني أقل من ابن العم الأول في كل السنوات في نوع من التطابق بين النسب مما يوحي بأهمية دراسة هذا الموضوع لماذا لم يتغير هذا النمط من الزواج طبعا من خلال الخلفية هذه وضعنا كفريق فرضيتين أساسيتين الفرضية الأولى أن زواج الأقارب يرتبط ارتباط مباشر بانتشار الأمراض الوراثية بين السكان القطريين وفحصنا هذه الفرضية والفرضية الثانية أن أفراد المجتمع لا زالوا يعبرون عن تفضيلهم القوي والواضح وممارستهم لزواج الأقارب منهجية الدراسة اللي اتبعناها اعتمد البحث مجموعة من الأساليب كمية وكيفية من أجل استقصاء الوضع الحالي وعلاقة زواج الأقارب بالأمراض الوراثية وأيضا الثقافة المرتبطة بهذا الزواج طبعا اجرينا دراسات استقصائيه من خلال الاستبيان لجمع المعلومات مقابلات فرديه ومقابلات جماعيه فوكس جروب وتحليل للوثائق والمرويات الشفاهيه في المحور الطبي قام الفريق الطبي بالتحقيق في المرض في الامراض الوراثيه واستكشاف العلاقه بين هذه الامراض وزواج الاقارب المحور الاجتماعي اجرى فريق علم الاجتماع الدراسات الآلي الآتية اجرى مسح على 1041 قطري لاستكشاف مواقفهم نحو الزواج من الأقارب تم اجراء دراسة معمقة على 195 حالة بينهم زواج أقارب يعني كلا كلا الزوج وزوجة هما أقرباء من بعض وكانت هي من أصعب الدراسات تم عقد 12 مقابلة جماعية مجموعات بؤرية وقياس آرائهم وتوقعاتهم بشأن زواج الأقارب في المحور الثقافي حاولنا أن نحن نضع يدنا على الثقافة التي تكمن وراء زواج الأقارب فأجرينا 
تحليل للمحتوى دراسة كيفية لمحتوى الأمثال المعتقدات والمقولات الشعبية الشفاهية بالنسبة للمحور الطبي القرابة, القرابة والاضطرابات الجينية في قطر أجرت عيادة الأمراض الوراثية دراسة مقطعية في قسم الأطفال وفي مؤسسة حمد الطبية وأيضا تحليل للحالات التي تتلقى الرعاية في مركز الشفلح طبعا تمت الموافقة على الدراسة من قبل لجنة الأخلاقيات مؤسسة حمد الطبية وتم إجراء مقابلات مع جميع المرضى وعائلاتهم البالغ عددهم 200 مريض من مؤسسة حمد وتم جمع المعلومات من المقابلات ومن الملفات الطبية أكدت البيانات أن لقرابة الأبوين دورا مهما في زيادة انتشار الاضطرابات الوراثية كما هو متوقع وبشكل رئيسي الاضطرابات الصبغية المتنحية في دراسة ثانية أيضا في المحور الطبي وهي القرابة والأمراض النفسية والعقلية هذه الدراسة الأولى من نوعها حاولت تقيس إذا كان هناك علاقة بين المريض وكونه جاي من زواج أقارب والحالة التي يعاني منها فقسم الطب النفسي أجرى هذه الدراسة واختبر خمس اضطرابات نفسية رئيسية وعينت من 412 مريض نفسي قطري لديهم سجلات طبية نشطة وتم اختيار اختيارهم للدراسة متابعة حالتهم على مدى ستة أشهر وكانوا 175 من الذكور و 237 من الأنف تبين أن 47% من المرضى كانوا نتاج زيجات أو عندهم زيجات قرابة من أبناء العمومة من الدرجة الأولى وهذه يشير أيضا بنجد في كل النتائج الدراسة أن التوجه نحو أبناء العمومة أكثر من أبناء الخؤولة المهم في هذه الدراسة أنها ما وجدت فروق ذات دلالة إحصائية بين الأقارب وغير الأقارب فيما يتعلق بتشخيص الاضطرابات النفسية الخمسة الرئيسية يعني الدراسة لم تكشف عن علاقة ذات دلالة في هذا المجال طبعا احنا اجرينا دراسة احصائية او مسحية على المجتمع ككل على الالف واحدة واربعين وبالتعاون مع السسري اللي قاد عملية التطبيق الميداني لهذه الدراسة الهامة وطبق عليها كل المعايير الدولية في تطبيق المسوح الميدانية فيما يلي بعض النتائج ما أقدر أنا أحط كل النتائج أو جزء مهم منها إلا بعض النتائج بسبب ضيق الوقت فطبعا لو لاحظتوا أنه لا زال منتشر زواج الأقارب في المجتمع القطري أيضا هم يدعمون يعني 52% من العينة أفادوا بأنهما يدعمون هذا النوع من الزواج طبعا الذكور لو لاحظتوا في البيانات المعروضة أن الذكور يدعمون زواج الأقارب أكثر من الإناث 55% من الذكور و 48% إنا طبعا العينة كلها قطريين طبعا من جداول أخرى ومن بيانات تفصيلية أكثر توصلنا إلى أن معظم المستجيبين المتزوجين هم أبناء عمومة يعني حتى اللي دخلوا في العينة من المتزوجين هم أبناء عمومة أيضا إحنا سألناه مسألة عن الأمراض اللي يعانون منها فطلع ارتفاع في معدلات الإصابة بالسكر وضغط الدم وهذه تلاء مع النشرات الإحصائية السنوية عن طبيعة الأمراض التي يعاني منها القطريين أيضا هناك مواقف إيجابية تجاه زواج الأقارب 
يعتقد بعض بعض المستجيبين ان زوج الاقارب يحسن النسل انه يكون ياخذون من نفس القبيله او من نفس الاسره بعض المستجيبين يفضل المستجيبين انهم يتزوجون من ابناء العمومه من جهه الاب اكثر من جهه الام طبعا هذا يرتبط بنيه القبليه القبيله في المجتمع القطري اللي النسب والسلاله ترجع الى الذكور من افراد القبيله هناك دعم للفحص المبكر للحد من الامراض الوراثيه قبل الزواج وهم واعيين باهميته وكشفت الدراسه ان كل ما ارتفع مستوى تعليم المستجيبين كانوا اكثر وعيا بالتاثيرات الصحيه لزواج ابناء العمومه وكشفت الدراسه ان الاناث اقل دعما للزواج لهذا النوع من الزواج اهم الاستنتاجات وهي ان الاناث يدركون دور الزواج زواج الاقارب في الامراض الوراثيه اكثر من الذكور كشفت الدراسه ان كل ان هناك علاقه بين ارتفاع مستوى تعليم المستجيبين والوعي بالتاثيرات الصحيه وايضا كشفت الدراسه ان الاناث اقل دعما لهذا النوع من الزواج نجي ننتقل للدراسات النوعيه اللي هي الكيفيه استخدمنا فيها عده اساليب المقابلات المعمقه والمقابلات الجماعيه وتحليل المحتوى بالنسبة للمقابلات المعمقة وهي من أهم الدراسات من وجهة نظري في هذا البحث لأن جابت لنا بيانات مهمة جدا أول شيء إحنا جمعنا وحللنا الحالات القط... حالات 190 195 حالة متزوجين من أقارب ركزنا على كيفية حدوث هذه الزج... الزوج... الزيجات وكيفية ارتباطها بالمصفوفة الاجتماعية لدولة قطر كان السكان المستهدفون هم القطريين تم تحديد الإسار بناء على مسح آخر تم إجراء اللي هو المسح الكبير حتى سألنا المستجيبين إذا كان ولديهم أقارب تربطهم قرابة دم لبعضهم البعض وحصلنا على البيانات الخاصة بهم وطلبنا موافقتهم المشاركة ووافقت 195 على المقابلة أهم الملامح العينة أن الفئات العمرية أقل من 30 سنة 24% ومن 30 إلى 39 20 ومن 40 إلى 49 25 ومن 50 إلى 59 18 وهكذا بالنسبة للاختيار الزواج 77% منهم طبعا احنا طلعنا بعض النتائج الكميه لان العينه تسمح بذلك ف 77 متزوجين من اقارب ابائهم وهذا يرتبط بلو لاحظتوا في المسح ان قالوا انهم يفضلون الزواج من ابناء العمومه فهذا الواقع يعكس الراي او الموقف اللي وجدناه سابقا 18% فقط ونص متزوجين من اقارب امهاتهم و53 من العينه افادوا ان اسرتهم هي اللي تنظم هذا الزواج وهي اللي تختار فقط 24 افادوا انهم اختاروا بانفسهم هني بعض حبيت احط لكم امثله على اجاباتكم واذا سمحتوا لي بحط بعض النماذج تبين إلى أي حد متغلغل متغلغل ثقافة زواج الأقارب وبنية الأسرة ودورها في عملية الاختيار الزواجي المركب أو المنظم الذي يسمى arrangement marriage في الدراسات واحدة تقول هذه قدري وهذه طبيعي في عائلتنا الفتاة لابن عمها كان طلب أبي هذه الرجل ذكر قال لا أنت قالت إن هذه طلب أبي لأنه قائد الأسرة فأن طلب أمر لي هني أيضا يوضح لنا كيف الإناث ينشأون على طاعة الوالدين وطبعا إحنا ديننا الإسلامي يعزز طاعة الوالدين ذكر قال أن اختار والدي زوجتي بموافقتي وتم ترتيب الزواج حسب العادات في قبيلتنا إلى آخره إذا ما أدري الدكتور عبد الله إذا يسمح لي الوقت إن أنا أسترسل شوية دكتورة وقتنا وقتنا يعني you can uh, 
uh, we'll allow you two minutes to wrap up. نسمح لك دقيقتين عشان to conclude. Because you actually uh, uh, used the time that allocated me. هذه أمثلة ممكن بعدين تحصلون على إن شاء الله يعني أنا أريد أن أنوه إلى أن إحنا نشرنا لحد الآن ثلاث دراسات كنتاج من هذا البحث. وفيما يخص هذه الزواج عبر الأجيال المقابلات المتعمقة الآن في مرحلة الأخيرة إن شاء الله للتقديم للنشر النتائج أهم النتائج في الدراسة المعمقة جميع الحالات كان لها علاقة قرابة مع شريكة تلعب الأسرة القطرية الدور في اختيار الزواج لا توجد فروق بين الأجيال إحنا قسنا رأي الكبار والصغار لا توجد فرق بين الأجيال في رأيهم حول اختيار الزواج وتفضيلهم لزواج الأقارب الأفراد ذو المستوى التعليمي العالي على وعي من أن زواج الأقارب هو عرفا مقبول ولذلك هم يتماشون مع العرف تنتشر أمراض السكري وأمراض القلب القلب مثل نتائج المسح لو تذكرتوا استرشد القطريين بالعناصر الاجتماعية والثقافية مما يشجع جيل الشباب على الزواج من أبناء عمومتهم وعشيرتهم النتيجة الأهم هي أن معظم أفراد العينة أبدوا رضاهم عن زواجهم وفعلا أنا قصت حالات الطلاق في المجتمع القطري بالنسبة للمتزوجين من أقارب هي أقل بكثير من الطلاق في الزيجات اللي ما بينهم علاقة قرابية وهذا شيء مهم يعزز فوات زواج الأقارب رغم المخاطر والعيوب أو السلبيات التي يظهرها هذا النمط من الزواج فهو يقوي من العلاقات الأسرية ويساعد على أن تكون هناك لا توجد مشكلات كبيرة ما بين الزوجين الجزء الأخير هو تحليل المرويات عن طريق استخدام منهج التحليل تحليل المضمون فجمعنا حوالي 130 مقولة و مأثور شعبي وحللنا طبعا منهجية التحليل كلها موجودة لكن ما يسعني الوقت أن أنا أذكرها فطبعا إحنا راجعنا عملنا حصر شامل للمتوفر من الأمثال الشعبية وحللنا على مستويين الكلمات والجملة رمزنا البيانات وصنفناها بناء على الموقف العام للمثل الشعبي هل هو إيجابي أو سلبي يشجع أو لا يشجع آه هذه جزء من الأمثال التي قمنا بتحليلها آه شوفوا لو بتلاحظون في مضمون الـ الـ الأمثال كلها تشجيع على الزوج من الأقارب وأهم واحد هو حالات الثوب رقعته منه فيه يعني لما يختار غريب يقولون لا لا يعني مش من العيلة حالات الثوب رقعت منه فيه يعني ما تجيب شيء غريب وتحطه في ثوبك إذا كان مقطع لا تجيب قطعة من نفس الثوب وترقع هذا وهذه بيساعد على أن أنت تعيش حياة راضية وسليمة وما لك إلا خشمك لو عاوج حتى لو تقول الزوجة ذي مو بجميلة وهي تقول هو مثلا مش متعلم وأنا متعلمة لا يقنعونها أنه ويقنعونه إن أخذها لأنها بنت عمك حتى لو ما كان أو ولد عمك حتى لو ما كان مناسب لك. أيوة. أخلص. هذه أهم الرسالة. استنتاج النهائي لا زال زواج الأقارب منتشر. تشير البيانات إلى الدور الهام لقرابة الأبوين في زيادة انتشار الاضطرابات الوراثية. تدعم العوامل الاجتماعية والثقافية هذا النوع من الزواج وتأثر على قرارات الزواج والاختيار حتى بين الجيل الجديد من الأبناء طبعا وفر لنا المشروع دي مجموعة غنية واسعة من معلومات حول القرابة وزواج الأقارب في قطر على مستويات مختلفة طبية واجتماعية وثقافية ساعدت على تحسين معرفتنا بالاضطرابات الوراثية والعاقات الناتجة عن زواج الأقارب 
ستساعد على صنع السياسات أصحاب المبادرات الاجتماعية والتعليمية والصحية على تعزيز مفاهيم الأسر الصحية والصحة العامة ستعمل هذه المعلومات على رفع مستوى الوعي بهذا النوع من الزواج وعواقبه وستدعم نتاج المشروع صانع القرار في وضع السياسات الأسرية طبعا هذه كلها بنفت بنفت والتطبيقات يمكن نتائج دمج نتائج البحث الإدارة الصحية الوطنية وأنظمة رعاية المرضى الوقاية من الاضطرابات بالذات الاضطرابات الوراثية في السكان القطريين تبني استراتيجية ثقافية لتغيير مواقف القطريين من زواج الأقارب الأقارب يجب بذل جهود لتغيير مواقف السكان تطوير المزيد من الإجراءات لتقليل عدد الحالات الطبية التي يمكن أن تنجم عن مثل هذه الزيجات لأن مثل ما قلت لكم في بعض الأسر منتشر فيها أمراض معينة يعني وصعب ولا زال ورغم معرفتهم بأن لو تزوجوا ممكن ينتج عن هذا الزواج هذا النوع من الأمراض إلا أنهم يتزوجون بسبب قوة وعمق ثقافة زواج الأقارب اللي مرتبطة ببنية المجتمع وهيكلة الاجتماعي المبني على القبيلة والأسرة الممتدة طبعا هاي تفاصيل ونشكركم على حسن وعقرا للتطوير شكرا 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 But uh, could you please hold your questions to the end? Uh, and Professor Kaltham will be here to answer your questions. So um, the next presenter is uh, Dr. Noura Lari, uh, also from Qatar University, also from Sasri. And her project is actually um, uh, an OSRA project, which is funded by uh, KNRF and DIFI. Uh, The title of this project is Analysis of Influencing Factors of Marriage Delay and Women's Labor Force Participation in Qatar. Uh, Dr. Noura, uh, over to you. And uh, you have 15 you minutes. Uh, for your uh, thank brief presentation, um, I would like uh, to uh, present my slide. Uh, I think I don't have the SharePoint still. Uh, just a minute. You, Could you double check this? You have um, the icon. So is it clear now? Yes, it's clear. It just put the presentation mode, please, at the end on the right hand side. Thank you. Right. Uh, so uh, hello. Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank QNR for this opportunity to present our project outcomes um, and also uh, thanks luck to all the previous uh, presenters and speakers, uh, Dr. Amal, Dr. Keltham, um, K uh, Dr. Ken Lee and um, uh, the team from Dr. Asma's um, uh, project. Uh, so uh, my name is Dr. Nora Lari. Um, I'm a head of policy department at CESRI. Um, um, back in 2019, we have submitted a proposal a grant um, which is like a, a joint finding DF um, curve DF joint uh, call uh, OSRA um, the project title is analysis of influencing factors of marriage delay and women's labor force uh, participation in Qatar of course like there are like two components uh, in our uh, project uh, we have made like some hypothesis um, uh, whether uh, marriage delay uh, was caused by um, women entering the labor force or Or vice versa. Uh, my team is um, uh, like uh, mostly like Cicri team. Um, Mr. Brian uh, Mandeka, Mohammed Al Ansari, Aisha Al Hamadi, Dr. Sana, and uh, Angel Maghribi. Uh, and um, I'm glad uh, to say that uh, two of our um, young researcher, Mohammed Al Ansari and Aisha, um, uh, as part of national capacity building, they have participated in this project and then went over uh, to do their uh, PhD uh, PhD program. So wish them all the luck. So uh, the main aims uh, of our project um, 
uh, was based on um, uh, several existing uh, studies uh, that have demonstrated that um, social cultural factors impacting family cohesion and um, marriage timing and labor force um, uh, participation outcomes at the individual, societal and institutional level. So previous studies had highlighted uh, some kind of um, um, factors that determine um, uh, uh, impacts on marriage timing and labor force, um, a market um, for both men and, and women. Um, and particularly, uh, female labor participation rates have already like increased in Qatar dramatically over the past two decades um, uh, and also like within the Gulf region in general. However, um, uh, reports and data shows that there is like a significant gap between married and unmarried uh, women's uh, labor for participation rates. For instance, um, there was like a report by the Planning and Statistics um, uh, Authority here in Qatar back in 2018, where it shows that married women represent almost half of uh, the economically um, inactive population. Uh, around 47% of them uh, are um, econo economically uh, inactive. Um, uh, and um, this basically represent a substantial hurdle uh, to making full use uh, of the country's human resources as a potential driver uh, for economic development. Uh, also, um, on the other hand, um, uh, the delay of first marriage is said um, to be as uh, one of the consequences of fundamental changes within the family itself, brought by transition and uh, fertility rates and educational outcomes. Um, also, like existing studies have highlighted other factors of delayed marriage um, for both like um, men and women, which include difficulty um, uh, of matching with potential uh, spouses, educational attainment, economic and family and uh, social norm uh, backgrounds. Uh, moving forward, so um, in order to fill a gap with reli reliable data on the factors influencing marriage timing and examine uh, trends and public attitudes toward associate factors that facilitate uh, continuing and or entering the workforce after marriage uh, for, for women, and also to identify the predictors of um, uh, gender differences within um, uh, in marriage timing itself, and to assess the influence of marriage transitions and tackle challenges of, um, of uh, Qatari family stability. So uh, basically the project presents an empirical research strategy guided by economic, uh, both economic modeling and theoretical frameworks frameworks uh, to shed light on the societal, family and individual factors that explain um, female labor force participation outcome and also marriage timing uh, and how these two components associate uh, together. Some of the uh, of the factors that we have examined are related to socioeconomic uh, demographics, social norms, family structure. Um, of course, Dr. Kasim highlighted that um, as part like a family structure here in Qatar, it's like the extended uh, family form and also the first cousin uh, marriage um, and the availability of flexible jo uh, jobs uh, in the labor market. So all of these factors has been uh, examined within um, uh, within within our project. The methodology that we have used like our like both um, mixed um, mixed methods. So we have um, uh, used like a survey instrument design. We have developed it and programmed it back in between 2019-2020 and um, as, as, as far as I remember this was like a, a time where, where it hit uh, where, with the COVID-19 um, um, uh, complications so um, we were supposed to have this as um, a face-to-face -face survey but uh, since there was like a lockdown uh, we have transferred this like to, to a CATI uh, where uh, or a telephone survey so uh, for everyone I like to be familiar with the term. So the survey collected demographic, attitudinal and behavioral data about female labor for participation. So we have used um, a survey instrument to measure this. Uh, Subscales assist a number of discrete, distinct uh, constructs, including job market, marriage timing, 
gender differences in the labor market outcomes and family uh, work family balance. So the target population was around 1,549 Qatari participants uh, age 18 and above uh, who were recruited to participate through a telephone uh, survey. We have also um, would like uh, like we have also sought to signals um, uh, some um, uh, very essential C3 databases. So in order like to measure the, uh, the the marriage delay component of the project, we have used an existing uh, survey research, which was like an NPRP project uh, funded by uh, QNRF uh, NPRP project uh, marriage delay. The, uh, the title is like marriage delay uh, project and uh, this um, existing database um, um, uh, has like a nationally representative data sample from 2013 um, which was uh, used to, un uh, to interrupt uh, the substantive uh, finding existing from the existing uh, database to examine gender differences at um, uh, marriage timing. The total uh, completed observation was around 1,800 um, uh, 26 participants out of these uh, like out of the sample size um, uh, there were like 1201 ever married respondents and what do you mean by ever married respondents is that um, people who have at least been married once in their life so um, but um, not basically um, uh, um, not necessarily uh, are um, married at the time where uh, the the survey was conducted so uh, they might be um, um, divorce or um, uh, or other like marital uh, status um, tied to them. So uh, all of these like 1,200 were included in the second part of, of our analysis to achieve uh, the, the objective of, of our study. We have also conducted uh, two focus group and two panel discussions. Uh, the focus group included um, both um, uh, male and uh, female, uh, Qatari male and female participants who were um, recruited through snowball sampling and uh, panel discussion included key stakeholders and users and also a group of academic and, and experts in order to discuss the association between these two components of, of our projects. So the main outcomes uh, or the main um, 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 deliverables uh, of, of our projects uh, were around uh, three new script, uh, two of them under uh, review and one of them has been accepted for publication. The first manuscript is titled Analysis of Factors Impacting Married Women's uh, Labor Force Participation Implication for Policy in Qatar, which is submitted like to a peer-reviewed journal. Uh, the second ma manuscript is also submitted to, um, um, uh, to a peer-reviewed journal um, uh, and it's titled Gender Differences and Timing of First Marriage Among uh, Qatari Men and Women. The third manuscript, which is um, uh, has been uh, ex uh, accepted for publication, uh, is uh, titled Toward Marriage Sus Sustainability Impacts of Delayed Marriage in Qatar. We have also produced um, uh, a technical document uh, which was established, uh, uh, which has established a terms of reference of technical working group. This technical working group um, uh, included some experts from uh, Doha Institute for Graduate Studies, uh, Doha and International Family Institute, DFI, um, Qatar University, and Hamad bin Khalifa University. So experts from these universities has been uh, like came together in order to discuss uh, uh, this um, uh, technical uh, document. We have also generated a multi-year long-term research agenda on women's uh, economic empowerment and family cohesion as part of a national uh, research and policy agenda for Qatar. Uh, the technical working group uh, that came together uh, um, uh, these members uh, will continue to coordinate and establish uh, a broader uh, national research and agenda on Arab um, family policy uh, on the long run. So, um, in order like, to discuss uh, the key findings of these, um, uh, the manuscript that I have mentioned, um, uh, we have used advanced analytical approaches uh, to econometrics uh, modeling. The findings uh, identified some key factors influencing both marriage timing and female labor force participation. So, our first, um, uh, like uh, the first uh, paper that we have um, um, uh, wrote like together uh, along with my co-authors. Uh, 
uh, we have identified some gender differences in marriage timing. We have implemented um, uh, what is called a Hickman two-step um, technique, uh, IMR, uh, ordinary least uh, sequence regression, and also um, a technique called a, bl a blinder oxymetric decompos decomposition uh, technique. So the finding um, out of this analytical approach that we have um, put together um, identified a uh, key determinants that explain differences in marriage timing. Uh, what do uh, and exactly like the age at first marriage between Qatari uh, men and women? Uh, so um, most of these uh, variation or uh, the variables that we have um, uh, um, conducted or uh, we have explored are related like to age, household side, education and employment. So these factors actually explain uh, some kind of gender differences like in marriage timing. Um, uh, our sample um, uh, has um, uh, like the, the mean age at first marriage was around 24 uh, years old for men and for women it was around 20 uh, years old yielding a timing gap uh, around uh, four years uh, between men and female um, uh, male and female and uh, to further explain the gender gap uh, in marriage timing we have used these analytical uh, techniques in order uh, uh, to see uh, the the association in, in this uh, gender gap uh, of, of, of Qatari adults. Uh, so the, um, the results are consistent. So we're consistent with our hypothesis that females enter into marriage earlier compared to men uh, as a way of avoiding the marriage sequence due to marriage delay. So and um, additionally, in order like, to explain this, uh, why do women enter into, into to marriage um, uh, before men? Uh, because of the desire for women uh, to maximize their like fertility as a function of their planned uh, number of children um, uh, may also like drive this relation. Um, also like based on um, uh, our uh, review of literature, we see that um, mostly like traditional societies, uh, cultural and religious norms um, tend to support earlier uh, marriage for adult uh, females. So this is uh, basically like uh, the hypothesis and um, uh, our data came um, uh, supporting. Uh, uh, you have one hypothesis. minute left, uh, Dr. Noura. I think you concluded already. Again? Uh, uh, sorry, I One minute left. Uh, so um, I'm just uh, concluding uh, for the second component. We have also find some core societal settings and individual level factors influencing women's decision to participate in certain jobs. This is like in terms of female labor participation. So certain jobs that require long work in our mixed gender environment or being promoted to top management position in comparison uh, to their male counter uh, parts. So these are aspects that hinder uh, women's participation. Uh, in certain uh, uh, jobs in the labor market. So um, uh, just to conclude um, regarding like policy and the practical implication, we have shared like our data with some end users who have used uh, the analytical knowledge that we have uh, um, um, uh, framed like in our project. Um, for instance, uh, so it's this is like including, but uh, it's not limited to Ministry of Administration, um, uh, Labor and Social Affairs, Ministry of Culture and Sport and, and uh, the Family Counseling Center, which is uh, WIFAC. Um, uh, of course, like our data have have yielded uh, some information regarding working mother uh, and we have um, recommended that facilitating their work uh, inclusion in the form of legisl legislation uh, to adopt flexible working hour and part time options. And if we, of course, um, uh, you can um, uh, everyone like can relate to this that the cabinet ha cabinet and Qatar have approved uh, the proposal of a system uh, enabling part time uh, work options uh, back in, uh, in September, I think uh, in government in Entities, whereby the number of working hours per week is reduced by half. So uh, this policy or this uh, proposal, um, uh, where negoti when, when, neg when negotiating this uh, with uh, or discussing this proposal with other team members and other scholars, um, uh, they see it like this is like non the not um, most ideal solution to increasing women labor force participation, particularly working mother. But um, uh, flexible working hour. Uh, 
might be like a like a best solution uh, for uh, for advancing women's um, uh, access like to the labor market and also for the stability of family and of course uh, my colleagues here have um, um, uh, emphasized the importance of balancing between work and family uh, and which is like and this is um, being considered as a family matter so child care responsibility efforts should be divided between two like both um, men uh, men and women and uh, so I think flexible work in hours is a plus uh, will be like a, fl a plus uh, solution um, in order like to solve to resolve this issue. Um, strengthening a family cohesion and expanding marriage financial support since our um, panel discussion and as well as uh, like our focus group discussion have revealed that uh, marriage costs were one of the uh, miss, most um, um, uh, um, uh, factors um, determinants uh, of male um, uh, increasing like uh, their age uh, at first marriage. So most of men delay their marriage because of marriage costs. So um, as part like of um, uh, implication of our project, we have also recommended expanding those uh, marriage financial uh, support and reducing the cost of uh, first marriage. Um, also, uh, uh, the con concluding note uh, this a project uh, the other project grant have has been developed into a larger funding opportunity, considering the theme of cultural identity and development of a human potential. Uh, uh, we have also proposed like another another NPRP project. Uh, it's called uh, Gender Education Employment, implementing the first survey of Qatar youth in order like to expand uh, more and to explore other factors impacting the, the Qatari youth. Um, uh, thank you very much uh, for listening and sorry for being uh, keep you for so long. Um, I know that I have Thank exceeded you. the maximum limits of time. Thanks Excellent. a lot. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Noura. Uh, could I just point out that the, some of the participants, especially my uh, colleague, Dr. Ahmed, has been putting some questions. So, and the questions are addressed to specific presenters, uh, for example, Dr. Kaltham and Dr. Lee. So, could you please feel free to, um, uh, to answer the questions in the chat box? Otherwise, we will always come back uh, to them later on. Our last but not least, uh, the final presentation is glad to say that is on uh, fatherhood this time around. So, um, Dr. Maha Sharif, associate professor at Qadr University, will be talking about her OSRA project on the shifting meanings of fatherhood in Qatar's transi transition to knowledge based economy. Uh, Dr. Maha, you have 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see my my slides though? I'm sharing, but I'm not sure you can see yes, them. Yes, we can see yes. your screen. The screen. Um, yeah. Yeah. Could you also yes. appear if you if you don't mind, please? Yeah. Can you also okay. turn on the camera? So unless you um, don't mind. So um, yeah. Thank you for allowing me to participate in this interesting meeting. Um, the title of our project is The Shifting Meanings of Fatherhood in Qatar's Transition to a Knowledge-Based Economy, and it's an ASRA-funded um, project. It started in 2017, and unfortunately, due to the COVID pandemic, we had some um, issues or some a delay in data collection, so this is why we were not able to finish uh, earlier than last year. Uh, to start with the background of the project, uh, as Qatar is defining itself, I mean, according to the QNV, Qatar National Vision 2030, Qatar is uh, defining itself as uh, a knowledge-based economy. And in this context, uh, it has become obvious that there is a need to explore uh, the role of fathers in pre preparing their children as future workforce participants. Uh, there has been a lot of studies in the past focusing on uh, studies about families, motherhood. However, uh, the focus on um, or there was limited consideration on the different ways that Qatari men understand their roles and their identities as fathers. So uh, like in this um, uh, event, uh, a lot of the presentations were about motherhood, but um, fatherhood is is kind of a neglected area uh, therefore the context of the rapid socioeconomic transformations in qatar uh, this study is providing important perspectives into qatari men's roles and identities as fathers 
and mainly, of course, the role of the father uh, in, in the um, knowledge-based uh, development of Qatar. The aims of the study, the study sheds light or is aiming to shed light on emergent notions of fatherhood in modern Qatar, especially in relation to knowledge-based development. It is also trying to uh, fill the gap in the literature, like I said, or, or I already said, uh, there's uh, scarce literature on uh, the construction of fatherhood, especially in the uh, in Qatar and not only in Qatar, but also in the uh, Gulf GCC region as a whole. It is also uh, trying to complement an emergent body of literature on fatherhood in the knowledge based development in Qatar. So basically it's trying to fill a gap in the literature about the construction of the meaning of fatherhood in the GCC area and more specifically in Qatar. So in brief, the study aims to explore Qatari fathers understanding of their role in preparing their children to participate as workforce members in a knowledge based economy. Uh, the methodology that we used in this project is a mixed methods methodology. We used surveys and uh, follow up interviews. Initially, we were planning on using focus group focus uh, groups, but uh, because of the, the pandemic, that was not possible. So uh, the initial phase of the uh, in, in the initial phase, we uh, developed a survey and then uh, because students were involved in, in the project with, with us. So uh, we got feedback in the piloting phase. We got feedback from the students and they were involved in the design of the of the of the of the questionnaire. So the initial version was modified based on the feedback that we received from the students and um, the students were the ones who distributed the survey and uh, we got 75 uh, responses only. I'm going to talk about this later on why it's a small sample. Uh, the interviews uh, were also developed in collaboration with the students and 16 um, interviews were conducted by the students as well. Now, uh, the survey was designed based on an extensive review of the literature and uh, it included four major uh, parameters, parenting styles, including authoritar authoritarian, authoritative, permissive. The second category was uh, child rearing and the last one is responsibilities. Uh, the pilot version of the survey was then shared with undergrad students from both Qatar University and Texas A&M uh, University. And based on the recommendations, like I said, uh, a revised version was adopted. So students were trained to um, dis administer surveys and to conduct interviews, and they were also uh, mentored in the data collection and analysis process. Um, the challenges that we faced in this project were mainly related to the data collection phase. So because of the pandemic, we were not able to collect data on time as planned in the project. And uh, we were planning on conducting face to face um, questionnaires. However, uh, because of the pandemic, again, uh, we, did, we took the decision to use uh, online questionnaires to administer them through online um, on online well. Uh, the focus group interviews were not also either possible because of the pandemic, you know, there was a lockdown and um, so we decided that uh, we would move on to uh, using face-to-face uh, -face or one-on-one uh, um, -on -one interviews. Okay, and uh, the other challenge is that uh, the PIs were only able to do the data analysis remotely through Zoom and to finalize the findings. So we were planning originally to meet in Qatar because um, two of my colleagues who are involved in the project, by the way, Dr. Zahra Islami and Dr. Uh, Radhika Viruru, were not able to come along to Qatar. And so we had to do the uh, data analysis and finalize the project uh, through Zoom and online. The outcomes of the project, first we uh, got a publication accepted uh, in a 2.68 impact factor journal and we are planning to write another paper 
We are also planning to uh, make a presentation in Multaqal Murabin Sadis Bi'anwan Al Usra Tahadiyat Wa Tumuhat. Uh, the multaqa was uh, planned to be on the 11th, on the 27th, uh, 7th and 28th of um, November, but it has been postponed to the 11th uh, and the 12th of December. So that, uh, that's going to be uh, a presentation of the findings of the project. And we're also planning on writing a white paper to the Ministry of Education and Higher Education and the Ministry of Social Development and uh, Family. Um, Impacts or the major findings of the um, project are as follow. Uh, fatherhood in Qatar is a complex social phenomenon that should not be easily reduced to dimensions such as authoritarian, authoritative or permissive. Um, now, in the literature on Western uh, societies or the, or, or the definition of uh, the construct of fatherhood in, in, in Western um, contexts, um, there is a lot of conceptualization and there is uh, uh, the identification that fatherhood is can be either authoritarian or uh, authoritative or permissive. But in the context of Arab countries, uh, that uh, research is, is lacking. So this project is bringing an important finding showing that uh, no fatherhood in the in, in the Qatari context or in the, in the Arab context should not be uh, stereotyped as uh, authoritarian at, as it has been. Uh, the, 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 the phenomenon is, is complex, it's, it's in a transition phase, it is evolving, it is changing, and so it is where worth of uh, uh, more uh, research and more uh, studying. Uh, although fathers are often characterized as mainly being providers, it is evident that fathers provide a great deal of nurturing and emotional support to their children. This is also another important finding from the research project. Uh, uh, traditionally, uh, fathers were defined as uh, authoritarian, were, were defined as, or their role was uh, mainly limited to uh, supporting the family, especially economic, providing economic support to the family. But um, the, 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 the study showed that mm -mm, the fathers do have other uh, roles as well. They are nurturing and they have, uh, they kind of uh, provide uh, emotional support to their kids. Uh, another finding is that fathers in Qatar are overall supportive of recent educational and economic reforms and appreciative of the opportunities created for their children. Um, so, um, especially when it comes to educational uh, support, uh, we're going to see how this is important in, 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 in relation to, to gender. I mean, uh, the, the attitude of the parents or fathers uh, to their kids, uh, to their children's um, education, whether they are male or female. Fathers particularly appreciate the fact that female Qataris now have access to higher education. So this is another important finding. Fathers are quite supportive of their uh, daughters, uh, continuing education at higher education levels. And uh, fathers are generally supportive of children choosing their own majors. So it's not like they impose on their kids what major they do, but they are supportive of their uh, own kids' cho choices. And this applies both to uh, females as well as to, um, to males. And they are also supportive of non-traditional feeds like methadone, and social media, like uh, medicine. They are not really, and they think that those uh, uh, fields or new fields uh, uh, flourish in the new economy and are useful to the Qatari economy. Father-daughter relationships finally are often characterized by warmth and support. So this is another major finding of the research. The potential uh, policy impacts. The study has potential impacts on Qatari society as a whole, and more specifically on students and families who participate in the study through the following means. Um, fathers in Qatar are supportive of the reforms associated with the creation of the knowledge-based economy, which can assist with the planning and future reforms. So this is an important impact, uh, which is uh, uh, in the area of planning and future reforms. In particular, the strong support expressed for pursuing higher education, especially for female students, can assist in future planning as well.
Now, future planning, of course, it can be in, uh, uh, in, in planning of curricula, for example. This is why we're planning on writing a white paper to the Ministry of Higher Education, because uh, the, imp the, the study might have some um, uh, some um, information that might be useful for uh, the representation of fatherhood in uh, uh, K through 12 uh, curricula and uh, curriculum design. Uh, the results of the study show also that contra in contrast to popular opinions, fatherhood is a complex social phenomenon, like I have already said. Further authoritarianism is not the defining feature of the relationship. This finding is important and can be used to contradict popular stere stereotypes. Uh, now, our ma one major limitation of the study is the small sample, like I explained earlier, because of the pandemic. So um, further research might be needed in order to confirm or disconfirm the findings of this research. So it is really interesting. It would be very interesting to uh, conduct further research to see to what extent uh, the finding or the, 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 the definition or the construction of fatherhood as uh, it has been indicated in this study is confirmed by uh, other studies. The theoretical impacts, the study shows that fathers now play roles not only as providers, but as emotional supporters of their children. So there is a need for more studies on how fatherhood is being practiced and embodied in everyday contexts. The study also indicated that fatherhood is in a state of a transition. Like I said, it is evolving, it's changing. It's not the uh, the same way it has always, always been defined in, in Arab societies. And therefore, it must be further studied to be understood better. And uh, the last theoretical impact is the need to involve ch uh, children's voices. I mean, the study uh, uh, explored uh, the construct of fatherhood from uh, Qatari men's perspective, but it would be also interesting to um, hear the voices of children, to see how children uh, view their parent, their father's uh, roles and identities. So uh, basically, so there is a, no, a need for child for including child's voices in studies of fatherhood and carry out studies that explore the conceptualization of fatherhood from children's uh, perspective. So this is all I have for you today. Thank you very much for listening. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much for completing on time. Uh, Thank you. Right. I think we have uh, some minutes for Q&A. Uh, if anyone wants to ask uh, their questions verbally, they can just uh, click on, just raise your hands and, and I'll be able to see you. Um, if not, uh, could I just ask um, Dr. Lee, there's a question from my colleague, Dr. Ahmad Ribai. Uh, he's asking you about the, the differences, uh, specifications of the local Qadari social economic model to impact the fertility compared to the global statistics. So in other words, uh, put take into the economic conditions into the consideration and then compare Qatar with the rest of the world. So that's a question from my colleague. Could you please uh, answer? Uh, we can open the, the mic for you. Dr. Lee? Hello? Yeah. Uh, okay. You want me to repeat the question? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I think income uh, income is one factor. Another factor is the availability of the domestic worker in Qatar uh, that also contribute to the high fertility rate. Uh, another factor is also religion and, and culture. Uh, the difference in in um, uh, Muslim society usually have. Uh, uh, higher fertility rate compared to uh, uh, non-Muslim uh, society. Uh, yeah, but again, yeah, I would say income and dom uh, the domestic worker also uh, uh, important uh, contributor uh, to the high uh, fertility rate in Qatar. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Kaltham. Uh, again, question from uh, my colleague, Dr. Ahmed. So, uh, on what you have uh, talked about the uh, first marriage, the cousin for uh, marriage for the first cousin, uh, he is wondering the uh, the policy, what the current policy says, whether that uh, uh, discourages, encourages 
So he wants your um, your comment on that, please. ما لا توجد سياسة معينة يعني واضحة في مجال الزواج في معدة الفحص المبكر يعني شرط الآن لعقد أي زواج هو إجراء الفحص المبكر فإذا كانت في أمراض يعني تبين يبينون للمقبلين على الزواج إذا كانت في أمراض ممكن تنتقل للأبناء فقط لكن لو طلع مثلا أن في أمراض معينة ممكن تنتقل نتيجة الزواج يلزمون بانهم ما يعني يعقدون او لا يعقدون الزواج غير ملزم يعني النتيجه وكثير من حسب يعني نحتاج احنا صراحه دراسه عن تطبيقات الفحص المبكر احنا سالناهم في المسح ووافقوا على اهميه هذه الذي لكن سالناهم اذا كانوا يعني بيستمرون ولا مش حيستمرون في الزواج ما كانت الاجابات يعني تشير إلى نتيجة يعني واضحة في هذا المجال ف... لكن حسب الانطباعات يعني وهي ليست يعني نتاج بحثية أن كثير من العائلات حتى لو كان في أمراض ممكن تو... تورث يقبلون على الزواج بسبب إيش؟ بسبب قوة ثقافة زواج الأقارب لأن مثل ما قلت لكم هي لها علاقة بالبنية الاجتماعية وليست ثقافة فقط هكذا وفدت إلى المجتمع أو تحقق فقط منافعي كانت في السابق نتجت عن المنافع اللي كانت في المجتمع الصحراوي الهش في أن تظل العائلة مترابطة مع بعض وتظل الموارد داخل الأسرة القبيلة فكان الزواج ولكن كأي عادة اجتماعية يضاف أو يضفى عليها قيم معينة وتقديس معين وأهمية معينة حتى لو راحت المجتمع تجاوز الحاجة لهذه العادة أو تلك تظل موجودة وحن نعرف أن كعلماء اجتماع أن التغير في البنية القيمية وفي الثقافة بطيء جدا في حين أن الحياة المحيطة بال بالمجتمع تتغير بشكل متسارع خصوصا في الاقتصاد وفي سوق العمل والتعليم وخلافه لكن تظل بنية القيم هي المحور اللي يرتكز عليه المجتمع ويضفي عليه قيم أحيانا دينية وأحيانا يعني نوع من الهالة حوالين عادة معينة حتى تبقى وتستمر وهذا اللي حصل بالنسبة للزواج الأقارب انتفت الحاجة له لكن لا زال موجود هذه الإشكالية ولا توجد لحد الآن أي سياسة للتوعية بهذا الخصوص رغم أن هي لها مخاطر صحية ولكن مثل ما قلت لكم أيضا نحن كباحثين نكون محايدين في عرض النتائج أغلب حالات الطلاق لا تقع بين الأقارب وهذا يشير إلى أن زواج الأقارب يزيد من تماسك الأسري وأيضا تحتاج إلى مزيد من التأكيد والدراسة العلمية شكرا دكتور آه خالد عنده سؤال آه خالد بليز جو هيد ويل اوبن ذا مايكروفون فور يو يا جو هيد I don't think we can uh, hear you. خليه يرفع الفوليوم. السؤال لي دكتور عبد الله. يبدو اني اسال لك او خالد سامس. عليكم. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. السلام عليكم، ما تسمعونني؟ سامعين الحين. بارك الله فيكم. سؤالي هو يعني فيه مجموعة من الأسئلة بالنسبة للمداخلات اللي تناولت تأثير بالثقافات يعني الثقافات الأجنبية وكذلك الزواج الأقارب وطاعة الوالدين. ألا ترون هل يعني أو السؤال الأول هو هل يعني دائما الاحتكاك بالثقافات الأخرى عامل هل هو عامل ثراء أم دائما أنه نراه نحن مثلا كمسلمين نراه عامل يهدد ثقافتنا بمعنى بمنظور ان عقده النقص تجاه هذه الثقافات في الوقت الذي يمكن ان نؤثر نحن 
ايجابا تجاه هذه الثقافه يعني ما الشيء الذي يخيفنا نحن كمسلمين في الاستفاده من الثقافات في المجتمعات الاخرى بحكم اننا بشر خلقنا من نفس واحده يمكن ان نجد ما هو خير لديهم ونجد ونستفيد من هذه الثقافات كما يقول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم الحكمة ضالة المؤمن السؤال الثاني يعني عندما نتناول على أن طاعة الوالدين بالنسبة لزواج الأقارب والأخذ بمعنى الآن مجتمعات مثلا مجتمعاتنا العربية الإسلامية بشكل عام خاصة من المنطقة الخليج من خلال المداخلات التي سمعتها تتحدث على أن المصير الزواج يعني داخل كل عائلة من منطلق أنه من خلال المقولات من خلال بعض الحكم من خلال تصريحات العينات تكلم على ضرورة طاعة الوالدين وغير ذلك إذا تكلمنا بمفهوم طاعة الوالدين أليسنا في حاجة إلى إعادة يعني طاعة الوالدين هذه ألا تتعارض مع مفهوم الحرية الفردية للإنسان في صناعة مستقبله ومصيره بمعزل عن الوالدين بمعنى أن مفهوم طاعة الوالدين بالشكل التقليدي الذي فهمناه يبدو أنه يعني فيه في حاجة واضح. إلى واضح. إلى واضح إعادة النظر. سامحنا على المقاطعة خلل ماي كوليكس أنسي الكوشنز. I think I can see دكتور أمال. Uh, but let me uh, allow دكتور كالثم تجيب على الأقل السؤال الأول وبعدين هو uh, في, س- في, to... س- في سؤال أخير إذا كان سمحت. Uh, we'll back, دكتور. اسمح لي. هل في سؤال اخر في سؤال ثالث اذا كان سمحتوا اسمح اسمح لي اه تفضل ارد دكتور عبد الله تفضل تفضل دكتور كاظم معنا السؤال السؤال الرئيسي هو هل الانفتاح يؤدي الى تغيير منظومه القيم عندنا ولماذا نعتبر الانفتاح مهدد مهدد الشعور بالتهديد هو لان في كثير من الامم اللي ما حطت حواجز ما وضعت حواجز أمام الانفتاح أو مهددات الهوية تغيرت هويتها بعدين الثقافة العربية عميقة وليست هشة وامتدادها عبر الزمان فلذلك أي محاولة أو من خلال الانفتاح محاولة لتغيير بعض القيم وبعض العادات والتقاليد تستنفر خصوصا بما يتعلق بالدين وبالأسرة الممتدة تستنفر المجتمع أنه هو يواجهها فاعتقد ان مهم جدا الانفتاح الهويه وليس كل انفتاح ايجابي ولكن ايضا لا ننغلق وناخذ بالمفيد هذه قضيه يعني شبعت وقتلت بحثا بالنسبه للسؤال الثاني طاعه الوالدين هل تتعارض مع مفهوم الحريه هي طاعه الوالدين تركيبه من القيم ذات ابعاد اجتماعيه وثقافيه وبنيويه ايضا في بنيه المجتمع نفسه ف الحريه عندنا احنا هل في مجتمعاتنا العربيه في ثقافه حريه اعتقد لازلنا بعيدين عن هذا الشيء والواقع يشير لهذه القضيه ان الحريه لازلنا بعيدين عنها في مجال الاختصاص اللي انا البحث هو الاختيار الزواجي الاختيار الزواجي في ظل ان الاسره الممتده لا زالت قويه ستظل ستظل عملية الاختيار الزواجي مرتبطة بعدة أطراف. نحن هنا في مجتمع القطري لاحظنا أن صار في تغير في عملية الأطراف اللي تقوم بالاختيار، كان في السابق الجدين وكبار رجال العائلة اللي سنبيهم بيت البيت العودة والأسرة الكبيرة. بعدين انتقلت إلى الأسرة الزواجية، الأب والأم المباشرين. الآن دخلت أطراف الأخوات هم يقومون بتوجيه عملية الاختيار. لكن كل هذه القائمة أو كل هذه الأطراف متبنية فهم معين واللي هو أن زواج أبناء العمومة يعني مهم وهم يفضلونه وشافوا فيه فوائد وفي ينتج عنا ترابط وسري وأعتقد أن هل نرغب إحنا بتغيير هذا الشيء الترابط مهم والتماسك مهم عندنا بما أن من الأقارب من نسبة الطلاق عندهم أقل من غيرهم لكن المهم هم هو ان ما يتزوجون اللي ممكن تنتقل بينهم الامراض الوراثيه هذه المهم وهذه طبعا يتعلق بالاستراتيجيه الصحيه في البلد بانها تعلي من قيمه موضوع التوعيه في مجال زواج الاقارب شكرا استاذ امال يو ونت تو هاف ا كومنت 
نعم شكرا بروفيسور عبد اللهي لم نذكر باي حال من الاحوال في اي مداخلاتنا خطوره الانفتاح على الثقافه الغربيه او الخارجيه بالعكس بالعكس من الطبيعي جدا ان ننفتح على ثقافات الغير لكن كنا يعني نوصي بان يكون هناك تجذير للقيم اللي تعمل لنا توازن داخلي ما بين قيمنا وما بين ما يدخل علينا من قيم خارجيه تجذير وايضا الاختيار ان يكون هناك ثقه في النفس تجعلنا من القدره ما كان ان نختار ما هو يناسبنا وان نبتعد عن ما لا يناسبنا لعدم الخوض فيما لا يناسبنا الان ليس وقته وليس مكانه ولكن ما نوصي به او ما نتمناه نتطلع له من خلال القيم الاسريه والتنشئه الاجتماعيه الصحيه السليمه ان يكون لدينا القدره على الاحتكاك بثقافات اخرى مع المحافظه على قيمنا الاصيله. تعليق واحد بس على نسبة الطلاق في زواج الأقارب وجهة نظر شخصية جدا بحتة انخفاض نسبة الطلاق في زواج الأقارب قد يكون سببه ليس أن الزواج من الأقارب هو الجيد أو الاختيار الصحيح ولكن ولكن بعض الأقارب يمنعون الزوجة من أن تطلب الطلاق بعض الأقارب يحجبون حقها في الطلاق بعض الأقارب هناك طلاق على فكرة مقنع يعني هي لا غير موجودة معاه في بيت واحد هي أو موجودة معاه في بيت واحد ولكن لم يشهروا طلاقهم رسميا لأنه ابن عمها أو لأن قريبها فنسبة نسبة عدم وجود طلاق يعني انخفاض نسبة الطلاق في زواج الأقارب هي ليست مؤشر إيجابي من وجهة نظري شكرا 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 أستاذ أمام ممكن أعلق فقط لأن بس أبغى أستاذ أمام احنا لما ربطنا النتائج مع بعض طلع من ال 195 عائلة بينهم زواج أقارب هم أشاروا أنهم سعداء وراضيين يعني سواء كانت امرأة أو رجل هم راضيين بهذا النوع من الزواج ويقولون هم متفاهمين وسعداء ويحسون أن اللي حولهم أقربائهم ويدعمونهم ويلجؤون لهم في وقت الحاجة فهذه قضية بس هذه لا يعني أن احنا ما نجري مزيد من الدراسات المعمقة حول موضوع زواج الأقارب هل يزيد من التماسك الأسري أو أنه هو مثل مثل أي زواج ثاني حتى نخرج بتعميم واستنتاج يعني حقيقي شكرا أمال على التعليق شوي مهم شكرا في سؤال لمحمد تبيشات we can open the mic for you محمد if you can hear us uh, and please be quick because I think we have already exceeded the allocated time for us when we sure. try to uh, sure. can you hear me now yeah go ahead please. yes well I hope to be very uh, short uh, the idea of liquid modernity I actually wrote my uh, wrote my um, uh, question just to save time. Uh, my name is Mohammed Tabishat. I am from uh, Dufar University, uh, an associate professor of anthropology. Uh, my question is has to do with liquid modernity, a liquid uh, liquid society that is now quite uh, rampant in contemporary globalized uh, societies. Liquidity and fluidity and change have also inflicted Arab societies. I think it is kind of illusionary to uh, an illusion to uh, to uh, somehow uh, uh, assume that uh, modern uh, Arab societies are still the same or they are still conservative. They might be conservative, but conservative in a fluid way too. Uh, I just want to ask: Is is it really interesting to somehow focus occasionally uh, to focus on those who have gone against tradition in good ways? not necessarily in destructive ways. Uh, okay. These uh, examples do exist in the Gulf, do exist in Kuwait, in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in Oman. I have actually quite a prolonged experience in this area. I have taught in different places. And I know that there are people who have actually gone against tradition in good ways in order to actually illustrate the bright aspect, the bright open-minded aspect of, uh, of contemporary Arab culture. Um, that's just a remark that might turn into a question if anybody is interested in in responding thank you so much okay. thank you thank you i think i might give this answer uh i'll let uh, dr maha or maybe um dr noora noora 
If you like, I can translate my question too. Very no, quickly. the question is clear. Uh, the, 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 our speakers are bilingual. They understand uh, both languages. Thank, I'm thank sure you they so capture much. your for question. Me this chance. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, um, if Dr. Maha is not, um, is not uh, cannot hear me, then uh, maybe I'll ask uh, Professor Kaltham. I'll come back to you, Dr. Professor, again. Yes, we are certainly living in different situations to a certain extent. In the Arabic region, the Arabic people are very small compared to the region. وكل جالية لها عاداته وتقاليدها وثقافته وشفنا في آخر فترة لما عملوا في الكورنيش كل جالية دخلت بثقافته وعادات لكن إلى أي حد هي مهددة في المنطقة نتكلم عن المنطقة عندنا يعني إلى أي حد أن المجتمعات دي الخليط أو التنوع في الثقافة وفي العرقيات وفي الأديان و... إلى أي حد مهدد لحد الآن غير مهدد من وجهة نظري كدارسة على المجتمع لأن أصبحت هذه الجاليات كعناصر أو جزر من عزلة عن بعضها صحيح إنه مجتمع خليط لكن كل نموذج أو نمط من ثقافات من عزل عن الآخر تقارب مع بعض في العمل في المصالح لكن لا تدخل في الحياة الخاصة والخصوصيات أنا أشوف أن هذا الموضوع وايد مهم لأن في شيء أهم وهو الانفتاح الرغبة عند القيادات الآن بالانفتاح لكن ما هو نوع الانفتاح اللي إحنا نسعى له هل الانفتاح فقط إن إحنا نجيب ظواهر ينفر منها المجتمع ونخليه تطلع في مجتمعنا وتستدعي نوع من المقاومة إحنا هني بدل ما إن إحنا نضبط عملية ردود الفعل ناحية الانفتاح إحنا بالعكس نستفز المجتمع ففي إشكالية في هذه الشيء يعني لازم تكون في استراتيجية واضحة عند الجميع يتبنونها حتى المواطنين في طبيعة الانفتاح وأهدافه ولا أي حد ولا أي مدى وهذه وجهة نظري وأنا أشوف أنه موضوع مهم ويستحق أنه تعقد لنا دوات يعني لمناقشته أوكي شكراً لكم we have already overrun. Uh, I'd like to thank all the speakers uh, for their for their time and uh, and making this uh, this happen. Thank you for uh, for the for the wonderful presentations uh, that you have made. Uh, and I look forward for to our next meeting. I also like to uh, thank Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Hatim Hani, senior manager program uh, program manager for the social science arts and humanities pillar, for his support and leadership. Uh, thank you, Sheikh Abdullah, for the wonderful organization. This event would, would not have taken place without your support. And above all, I thank all the audience who came here today for the time. Thank you all. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Shukran. Thank you. Thank you.